Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. When taking on a dependency, like a third-party library, people often create their own abstractions to act as a wrapper. This way, they're depending on their own code rather than the dependency directly. But do you need to do this right from the start? Not really. I'm gonna show a code example of me removing a dependency and creating the abstraction while I'm actually removing it. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So why wouldn't you want to abstract something right from the get-go? Well, there's two reasons. One is that you may not understand the dependency well enough to actually create a meaningful abstraction. But the second one, which I'm gonna illustrate here, is much harder because oftentimes this is more like framework code where it's calling your code rather than you calling it. Oftentimes people wanna abstract something immediately because of testing, because it's hard to test. My argument there is don't take a dependency on that doesn't really have a good testing story. So to illustrate removing a dependency that does not yet have an abstraction, and I'm gonna actually create it while I remove it, I'm gonna be using the eShop on container sample application. All the code modifications I'm about to show are available to my developer level members on YouTube and Patreon. I really do appreciate your support. They get access as well to a private Discord server where you can communicate with other developers about software architecture and design. If you want more information on joining, check out the links in the description. So there's no particular reason why I actually use this as a sample. So I just opened it up when I was starting to look at this idea for a video. And I went into ordering. I looked at one of the projects to see what dependencies we're using here. And I immediately noticed it's using Mediator, especially in this ordering kind of context. So I understand Mediator well enough, and I think most people do in the .NET space. So I decided this is what I'm actually going to replace. For those unfamiliar with Mediator, the general idea here is you could think of it as an in-memory bus, where you have request objects, where you send those request objects to the Mediator, Mediator then invokes your code. So as I kind of mentioned at the very beginning, this is actually much more difficult because it's two ways. One, you're calling it, but it's actually also calling your code, which makes this more difficult to abstract. So what I'm gonna do is I've removed it from pretty much all the projects. I'm gonna remove it from this one as well. And this is all done within the ordering, kind of this particular context, which is using it. So I removed it everywhere. So now this thing won't even build. So now with that dependency completely removed, if I look at, let's say ordering API, and we go in application, go to commands. Let's look at create order command. And we can see that I request no longer exists because that was a part of mediator. That's the type that was belonging there. Um, if I look at the actual handler, so this is the code that the mediator would invoke for us. We no longer have an I request handler. We no longer have I mediator. What else is down here? Same type of usage. None of this is really gonna work because we've completely removed Mediator. So how do we start resolving this? So I've recreated all the different types that Mediator was providing. The interfaces, the delegates, et cetera. Everything is here. So now when I jump back over to what I was looking at before in ordering where we removed everything, let's go back to the create order. So let's look at create order command. Now we can see that I request, it's there because I've created it as well as if we go to the command handler, we can see that mediator type exists now, the actual I request handler exists. So all these types exist, I can actually even build now, and we get no errors, build succeeded. So all the types exist. The problem is there's actually no implementation. So if I actually ran this, we get exceptions because I have actually no implementations for any of these interfaces. Now, while I could create my own implementation, I actually wanted to replace it with another dependency. So this is the, actually the first one that I came across called Slim Message Bus, because all I was really searching for was an in-memory bus. But this one also supports different transports, so you can move uh, kind of out of process using a broker or different types of transports. So I'm actually going to replace Mediator now with this Slim Message Bus, and the, the goal here is to change as little of my application code as possible by that now creating, implementing those interfaces and creating my abstraction behind those. So I'm basically gonna be wrapping now Slim Message Bus. So the first thing I'm gonna do is along that project where I've created all my own interfaces, I'm now gonna start depending on Slim Message Bus. So the next step here is creating my own implementation of iMediator. 
So what I have is I kind of have this Mediator Slim Message bus um, that's implementing iMediator. I've implemented all the methods, and in doing so, I'm really just creating a wrapper. So what I'm doing in the constructor is I'm taking on an iMessage bus, and this is actually the Slim Message bus that we're depending on. So we're gonna get that, and we're really just mapping all kind of the different behaviors that was happening in Mediator now to this Slim Message bus. So I have a couple different me methods that I had to implement, publish, send, and a different version of send. And we're getting errors here because this relates to the next step. So what we need to do is we're looking at I request, and the issue here is that this is just our type, but we now need to use the Slim Message bus type, which is actually the I request message. So I'm going to have our interface also extend this one so that if I jump back over to Mediator, our implementation here, this error goes away because now our bus.send is actually getting the type that it actually needs. So the next thing to tackle, now that we have an implementation for iMediator, how do we handle something like this iRequest handler? Because when we look at our actual command handlers or request handlers, if I go back to ordering, we look back here to application, commands, let's look at the create order command handler. This is what we're actually trying to invoke. But the problem is, is that we have this I request handler and that's not what Slim Message Bus is actually looking for. So how do we get around that? So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is have this I request handler actually extend the interface, the marker interface that Slim Message Bus uses. So what it does is I'm going to call Slim Message Bus, I request handler. I'm gonna pass the T request, T response, because it does it in the same type of way. So that's the first part of that. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna actually turn this into an implementation. In order to do that, I'm actually gonna turn this into an abstract class. I'm actually gonna leave it uh, called I request handler. But now we see when I uh, implement this, the method that we actually from Slim Message Bus that we need to implement is called on handle, not handle. So if we jump back over to the create order command handler, we see everything's still fine but we have handles, so what do we need to do here? Well, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an abstract method called handle that we're actually gonna to need to override. So now we're gonna get an error because we should be overriding it. But now we can see that we have this on handle method that we need to implement. Really what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna make it call the handle method. So I'm gonna make it call handle, we'll just pass the request and a cancellation token of none since we don't have any in this particular circumstance. So now we have this I request handler that's really an abstract class that we have an abstract handle method that we need to override, but we're providing the actual implementation what Slim Message Bus is requiring, and we're just kind of delegating it, passing it along to this handle method. So now what I'm gonna do is, because all of these handlers are gonna have this issue, I can look at make um, the method handle override, but I'm actually gonna do this to everything in the particular project. So we're gonna do some refactoring here, thanks to the beauty of Rider and ReSharper. And this did it to every command handler. We can see that they all change blue now, because now they all have the override. Now finally, what I can do in this particular circumstance is I don't actually need it to be called iRequestHandler anymore because it's not actually an interface. So let's rename that as well. Do our refactor rename. And then now we can see here, doing the same type of thing, we've renamed this. So we're not implementing an interface, we're just extending this abstract class. So I did the exact same thing for the I notification, which is for publishing events, notifications, and doing those in memory. Um, so that's basically the exact same flow as what I just did. And to illustrate this further of how this all works, I just have some tests here that are doing exactly what you would do in your normal application code. So I have a test request that returns basically a string. I'm just gonna pass in a name. And my handler for that is just gonna take what we're actually incoming, so the request.name, whatever it is, and we're just gonna return it. So whatever we pass in, we're just gonna return back out. So in my actual test here is exactly that, is I'm going to send a test request with code opinion as the name, and that's what we should get back as a result. So we should get back code opinion. So that's what I'm sending in, that's what I'm expecting, and our test passes. So what we've done is we've just basically created our own abstraction, our own wrapper, from Slim Message Bus, but we are using the exact same, for the most part, the same interfaces, the same structure, where I really didn't change any of my actual application code. The wrapper, that kind of abstraction that I created, stayed the same of what Mediator was, and then we just wrapped it and made slight changes to fit Slim Message Bus. So would you just stop there? No, likely not. 
you would likely end up starting any new code, start using Slim Message Bus directly as it's actually intended with its API, not using your kind of abstraction. But at least at this point, you could actually start going back to all those places that is using this abstraction that I created and replace those and fix those to use Slim Message Bus directly. So kind of fix those up. But this provides you kind of that stopgap where you don't have to make all these code changes all at once. You're basically keeping all that application code that's using it pretty much relatively intact. Now you may be saying, okay, that's great, Derek. You replace something that was very similar, but that's actually gonna be the case most of the time. Now this can get much more complicated, but it still follows the same principle of kind of keeping the shape of your application code as is with minimal change. Now I've done this multiple, multiple times following this exact same kind of flow. For example, I've actually done this by replacing Nancy as a web framework with ASP.NET Core underneath the hood using the new endpoint routing. So I've completely replaced Nancy with almost zero changes to any of what my Nancy modules were by simply creating my own implementation of a Nancy module, which really under the hood just calls ASP.NET Core directly. So hopefully this illustrated how you can kind of remove a dependency and when you're doing that, at that point, actually create an abstraction. Am I saying that you should never create abstractions for third-party dependencies? No, of course you're going to. And depending on the situation, that may be easier. But when you're working with type of framework code like this as an example, you can still get kind of get out of the way by not having to do all that work up front. Because if you do change it, that's a big if. Are you really gonna replace something fundamental like that's infrastructure code? Maybe, maybe not. But if you do, there is generally a way around it, kind of as I illustrated. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.